I want to look where nobody has looked before. The size. Nothing has been built on its scale before. It's so big. And it's so complex. Boldly go where physicists haven't had a chance to go before. Hi, I'm Alison, a PhD student working on the CMS experiment here at CERN. I'm going to take you for a journey into my world, the world of particle physics. Follow me. I'm doing is really I'm going, really for, going the truth, for the truth, for the most for basic, the most basic, basic truth. Truth. to have a chance have a to chance see something, something, something that nobody, that nobody has even thought of seeing. To further, further man's knowledge, man's of, the, man's of, knowledge of, the of the basic, of the basic uh, structure, uh, of matter. structure of matter. We know the world is not just what our eyes can see. My camera may not be able to see the skiers on the mountains, but with a sufficiently powerful zoom, I could see the traces that the skier leaves in the snow. Particle detectors can be thought of as a giant digital camera that records traces of subatomic particles. But first, let's take a step back. try to understand what our world is made from. One way of finding out what something is made of is by taking it apart and analysing the pieces. And then again, taking apart those pieces into smaller pieces, further and further, until we reach the scale of the atom, around 100 million times smaller than that of a grain of sand. This is about the smallest thing that we can see with the most powerful microscopes. But we want to go further, much further. For that, we need a particle accelerator. Particle accelerators use subatomic particles, such as protons or electrons, as projectiles and make them travel near the speed of light before smashing them into one another. Using this technique we have discovered that in fact our world, stones, air, even us, are all made from just a handful of different types of fundamental particles. As far as we know, the whole universe is made of the same few particle types, electrons, up and down quarks, and electron neutrinos. However, we also find that when we smash particles into each other, we create particles that don't normally exist and that only last for a short time before transforming into the more familiar and stable electrons, quarks and neutrinos. The particle creation happens because matter and energy are interchangeable and can transform into each other. Does this ring a bell? Well, it's Einstein's most famous formula which basically says that you can create mass from pure energy. When we smash particles into one another, we release a lot of energy and can make new particles. And the more energy that's released, the heavier the types of particles that we can create. We now know that in addition to the up and down quarks, there are four heavier quarks, known as charm, strange, top, and bottom. There are also two heavier versions of the electron, known as muons and taus, with their accompanying neutrinos. The conditions inside our particle accelerator, huge energies in a very confined space, are similar to those that existed around the time of the Big Bang, some 13.7 thousand million years ago. We are effectively trying to make little bangs in our laboratories in order to understand how the universe came to be and why it looks as it does now. So, particles are all around us. Some of them are heavier than others. Some have electric charge. Spin. And so on. And the particular combination of all these properties actually defines the particle. Our quest is to understand why certain particles have certain properties. We develop a description of what we already see and try to predict other properties that we can measure experimentally. In fact, 
We even try to predict the existence of particles that we have not yet seen. Currently, we have a mathematical description known as the standard model that explains a lot with unprecedented precision. But we already know it has its limitations. For example, it doesn't explain why there are only six types of quarks and why they each have a different mass. Maybe one day we'll find a model which describes everything in the universe, a sort of theory of everything. The theory of everything should be able to help us describe the fundamental interactions as they were occurring at the very earliest times of the universe. They should also be able to help us understand how particles interact in the world as we find it today. Okay, now that you know it all, let's go to the lab and get our hands dirty. we are building one of the world's largest particle detectors, the compact muon solenoid. Over 2,000 scientists, including 400 students from 155 different institutes spread over 37 different countries around the globe, are working on this huge project, which started back in 1990. It's a, it's a large collaboration of people, all trying to work together to achieve a common goal. I've seen people from almost all the continents, and that's the most exciting part. CMS is one of the large experiments at LHC. A detector which is uh, being built to uh, test various aspects of our current knowledge of physics. It's a, a big magnetic spectrometer. It is the equivalent for particle physics as a medical scanner is to the doctor. It will be uh, constructed and uh, running from around 2007. The CMS detector will be over 20 meters long and 15 meters in diameter. It will weigh more than 12,500 tons. That's nearly twice the weight of the Eiffel Tower. The detector will be assembled and tested in the surface hall and then lowered in segments into a cavern 100 meters underground. CMS is based around the world's largest superconducting solenoid. It will be housed inside this tube. Its magnetic field will be about 4 Tesla. That's about 100,000 times that of the Earth. But don't let this amazing size fool you. The most incredible thing about CMS is not its size or its weight, but its precision. After proton-proton collision inside CMS, we have to know where the produced particles originate from and where they went. We have to do this with a precision of 10 microns. In order to do so, we use a silicon detector which is finely segmented. For example, the inner tracker of CMS, which is behind me, consists of 13 layers of silicon sensors, which are divided into uh, strips and pixels. These strips and pixels are only a few tenths of a micron wide. This is much smaller than, uh, than the di diameter of a human hair. We are placing right now uh, these uh, silicon sensors in, in the layers with a precision of only 100 micron in, in this volume of 5 by 2.4 meters. The detector is made of many concentric layers, a bit like an onion. These layers are packed together to form a very compact, but huge, detector that allows us to detect and measure different aspects of different particles. For example, to measure the momentum of a muon, we use a very strong magnetic field. Electrically charged particles, such as muons, are deflected by magnetic fields when they move. By measuring the amount of this deflection, or bent, we can measure their momentum. Let's go and take a look at the different layers.
CMS is one of the four detectors which will be placed around the world's largest particle accelerator, the Large Hadron Collider. The LHT is essentially a tube 27 kilometers long, 100 meters underground, which will go approximately there. particles will be accelerated in opposite directions using radio waves. It's a bit like the protons were pretending to be surfers riding the waves. Each of these tubes contains a superconducting magnet. Over 5,000 are needed to keep the protons in a circular path. When they reach their maximum energies, the two beams of protons will be sent smashing into each other, four specific collision points around the ring. In the LHC, the probability of creating a new and interesting particle is extremely small, perhaps as difficult as finding a needle in a million haystacks. So, to get something interesting, we need to collide the protons very often. At LHC, there will be about a thousand million collisions every second. Just to make our job more complicated, some of these particles have a very short life. And before we can capture them, they have already transformed into something else. So, we are a bit like detectives. We look at the evidence and try and find out who done it. We can't store all information from every collision, so we have some clever electronics and software, which keeps only the potentially interesting stuff. For example, if we see a muon in our detector, it's evidence that someone heavy and important was around. We cannot observe directly a proton collision inside the detector, so to know what really happened, you will have to combine all the different signals from the subdetectors of CMS and then reconstruct what happened during the collision. So in this screen, you have a simulation of what could happen uh, inside CMS. So you have two protons colliding, coming from this uh, white tube and then creating a whole lot of particles. And in particular, the two pink ones, they are electrons, and the red ones, muons. This is a simulation of a Higgs event, so if we observe something like that in our detector, then we will be happy. So now we only need to find the needle in a single haystack. Why are we doing all of this? We want to pursue our understanding of the universe as it is and as it was. There are many unsolved mysteries. Why is the electric charge of the electron exactly the opposite of the charge of the proton? And by the way, what is charge? Why do some particles have more mass than others? For instance, why does the proton have a mass about 2,000 times the one of the electron? At the time of the Big Bang, there was an equal amount of matter and antimatter. But now we only have matter. Where has all the antimatter gone? Why is it that the universe is clumpy, with matter concentrated in galaxies? Why is it not just a big ball of energy? From our observations, it seems that the universe is hiding most of its mass and energy. Where is the dark matter and energy? Einstein, I go, go. Well, we have some possible explanations which will be studied at CMS. For example, a theory known as supersymmetry may give us the answer to the question of where all the mass in our universe is hiding. While a phenomena called CP violation could help us understand where all the antimatter has gone. And then there's the Higgs mechanism. There is one main uh, uh, expectation that we have, uh, that is to clarify the existence or non-existence of the Higgs particle. We have a standard model of particle physics which worked very well, managed to explain lots, lots of uh, experimental observation. But the main problem that we have with this model is that it's totally unable to explain why particles have masses. The idea was to introduce a new type of particle, which is called the Higgs particle, which by interacting with those other particles would give them mass. 
The only problem is that we haven't observed it yet, and so it's going to be a major challenge. If we discover the Higgs or something equivalent, a big step forward uh, will be given in science. The Higgs boson and supersymmetry are just theories. CMS and the other LHC experiments may prove these theories right or wrong. But what we do know is that they will provide us with an insight into the unknown. What physics is really about is learning your imagination to understand nature. That's what we do.